this tournament. Seeding in the Madden Bowl. Winner goes to Group D. Loser goes to Group A. Here's something that they didn't talk about. And this is this you mentioned it when you were talking about the seeding in this one, TD. A win, if if Pavan does win and go into Group D, three make it out of the group stage. So could is it possible that Pavan goes? Let's go all go to Group D. Let's all take out Rage and have my three friends all move on from the groups and create sort of a dominant force in the group stage. Exactly, and that's where the strategy part comes in. Like you said, if he can go in there and then them three decide, okay, we'll just take out Rage, who they think might be the weak link, but then does he want to go in there and have to battle his buddies? So, I mean, it's really interesting, interesting strategy choice. We'll see what he does. And then the other thing is that $1,000 in the line. I mean, it, uh, they've already secured themselves that $5,000 minimum for getting into the Madden Bowl today and yesterday, but another $1,000 added onto your pocket is always nice to have. So it's very interesting on what these guys are going to do. A little bit of strategy coming here in the seeding game, but no strategy when it comes to wanting to put an extra $1,000 in the pocket. Popping with the ball first, second and nine, stepping up with Michael Vick. Looks left side, he finds Winslow. Listen, if Popin wants some advice on what to do, TD, what it's like playing your friends, she should maybe ask Decroft, who had to go through three of his crewmates to get here. <laughs> Great point. Decroft has not yet lost when undefeated. You know, he was in that winner's bracket. So he, he doesn't have any, uh, you know, scars on his track record. Pavin did lose once, but he fought back. Nice wheel route right there to Josh Cribbs on the sidelines, going with that verticals concept versus that cover two. Always so interesting here, playing ultimate team salary cap mode. Seeing guys successful at the wide receiver position like Josh Cribbs and Devin Hester, guys who are no more special team specialists, not really used a whole lot of the wide receiver position, but the speed, the athleticism they bring, they get used here in ultimate team as there's the fullback dive from Kellen Winslow. It picks up one. Yeah, Pavin's had a lot of success with that fullback dive all day. Looks like Decroft is ready for it. Coming out in some in a 3-4 pinch. Uh, great defense for that fullback dive. Pavin, you know, going to take his time. And that's the thing I wanted to point out about Pavin. I love the way he, he, he always plays so controlled. Like, he doesn't, like, make a lot of mistakes. He takes the underneath stuff. It seems like he's always in control of the game. He manages the clock so well. And that's a very underrated part of um, competitive man. And, and, and Pavin's great at it. As Kellen Winslow takes that carry one more time out of that far tight slot. Appreciate everybody at home who's been hanging out with us all day over on ESPN2 and now here on Twitch, YouTube, and the ESPN app. Nick Mazesco, Tyler Davis along with you. $1,000 game of Madden. There just aren't that many opportunities to put that kind of cash in your pocket. So this means a lot to these guys. The Madden Bull field is filled, but where will they fall into place? We'll know at the end of this game. Third and four. Vic dropping back. Oh, pressure off the left side. We talked about those edge threats, and there's oh. a pretty good threat. That's Julius Pepper, the former threat, Carolina yeah. Panther. Man, that's such a good strategy, those dual edge threats. It's really Crosses glitchy. I wonder open. if a lot of people watching this that are in the Madden Bowl are thinking, hmm, maybe I should add that into my game going to Madden Bowl. You know, we, the meta did switch, like we said, to a more pass-heavy game. So having those two edge threats has been huge for Decroft. That's why I'm interested to see if guys start to do that in the Madden Bowl. Julius Peppers, 159 and a half sacks in his career, fourth most in NFL history, and he's putting in work for Decroft, who will get the ball after a defensive start, stop to start this game. Uh, and, and, and TD, I want to talk about this because, you know, a lot of people look at this game, you see a belt winner. Decroft still, you know, looking for a mark. He went as a great punt, punt to the two yard line. But let me tell you who Decroft went through. He said he's undefeated getting here. He went through McKinley's status, a former Lions Club champion, Z Thumbs, the defending Dolphins Club champion, Free the Penguins, the defending Bengals Club champion, and then his own crew member, Justin, and then he beat Jay Wall twice. I mean, that is a trial by fire. <laughs> yeah, that's a great, great run, beating four club champions, Jay Wall last year, the Patriots, and then Justin, who came onto the scene this year. An impressive road, hasn't lost, like we said. Yeah, and the thing with Decroft, both these guys actually, is, you know, we know how good both guys are on offense. As you see, uh, Decroft setting his audibles here in that New England playbook with that gun U trips. But yeah, both these guys usually known for their offense, but their defense. I mean, Decroft shut up J Wall seven nothing yesterday. J, J Wall, one of the best offensive players, and we saw Pavin versus Glover. Uh, you know, just dominate, especially in that final game. You know, help beat him twenty seven nothing. So these guys' defense is what's propelled them into the Madden Bowl. First down attempt for Decroft. He needs to find 98 yards of offense. At the moment, he takes four, just get out of his own end zone. Rodgers dropping back to pass. Stepping up, waiting. Bosa got free for a second. Here they come. Oh and my he God, got him in the end zone. Me, a defensive.
their safety for Pavin, and it all started with that impressive punt. So Downing it at the two-yard line, and Pavin puts two on the board. Yeah, you gotta throw the ball away there if you're Decroft. <laughs> scary, scary situation. He couldn't get out of the end zone. Rogers has the escape bar, so he doesn't have that speed that Mike Vick has, and a big safety for Pavin there taking advantage. Well, he has uh, officially given up more points than he did in that grand final yesterday. It's given up two. It's two nothing. Looking like a baseball score. I think Josh Lewin's gonna hop back on the call if it stays here. First and ten. Looking left side. That's a catch for Josh Cribs all the way down to the 47 yard line. Four four passing to start this game. The question for Pavin: Can he avoid the defensive pressure? Yeah, that's the key. Pavin's been phenomenal, and I love the concepts he's doing. He just has the he has the deep post, and he has that crosser, right? So he only has three routes. Then he has Torrey Hall on a couple different things in the slot. Oh As my God! Crosser right there, risky. The, but oh uh, Torrey Hall, yeah, he's had him on different underneath routes, and then he would just playmaker him. So he's basically match protecting every play all day with with oh three routes, God. and then using that Torrey Hall to go different ways. It's really it's really great when picking up that one four six. He's already driven down to the 25-yard line, back into that far tight slots, hands it to Kellen Winslow. So far, though, Decroft, who showed great run defense yesterday. We talked about how well he played in the Xbox side. He sh he's shown that run defense one more time, not thrown off by what Pavin is doing out of this under center formation. Does Pavin show him something different? He does. He's going to drop back to pass, trying to find some room. Good pockets presence, taking a shot oh in the end zone. God. John Ross like can't get the feet in bounds. Pavin cannot believe it. That was such a dog. Wow, <laughs> unfortunate break right there. Couldn't get the feet in. He made a nice Got click him. on, kind of swerved to get his feet down, but couldn't. A oh, big break right there for Decroft. Uh, nice, and that's the thing I like about Pavin. He's when he's go to when he goes to that far tight slots. He's mixing in a lot of these crosses, a lot of these deep posts. It can, it's a very balanced attack because you you expect him to run in that far tight slot. So when he hits you with that, it's really difficult for the defense to come. Defense, come on. Pressure up the oh, middle. Oh, down oh, goes oh, Pavin. Oh, the oh. corner. Denzel Ward. The Cleveland Brown coming right down Broad Street. And Pavin's gonna have to settle for a field goal. Let's keep this bad boy a baseball game. TD. It's five nothing. Thing as we near the end of the first. <laughs> Five to nothing. You never see that a lot in competitive Madden, but great defense right there. Those edge threats coming through. You know, he only rushed oh three God, right there, there, but he's able to get those block sheds, able to hold Pavin to three. And now we'll see Decroft back in that u trip offense. The, the thing I respect the most about Decroft is he sticks, he's stuck in his offense all year. You know, you usually sometimes you see guys switch to the meta, what works. Decroft, no one else uh, that's in the Madden Bowl or, you know, no one really runs this gun u trips formation. He's been running this for years, and that's why he's so uh, dominant in it and so comfortable with it. First and ten. Rogers stepping up, taking off. He'll slide down. Take a look at his offensive lineup. TD, he did not spend a ton on the offensive line. 20 cap, 18 cap tackles, but at the guard position, only 14 caps. 76 overall, Kevin Zeitler, 14 cap, and 75 overall, 14 cap, Joel Betonio. So clearly he's not looking to spend a lot of time in the pocket. Yeah, no, a lot of guys like to, you know, kind of punt and have low cap or low overall guards. That's usually a position you can kind of punt, but he's got uh, decent tackles. But, yeah, it's very surprising, especially when he passes every play. I mean, this is a guy that's never going to run. And, you know, another thing, too, with that Rodgers, he, he doesn't have a lot of abilities so on that Rodgers as well. He does have the escape artist. He does have identifier, which allows him to see who the defense is using. But besides that, he doesn't have uh, any other abilities, which is a little surprising since he's such a pass-heavy player. Aaron Rodgers, though, came into the game with the best I'm not, I'm throwing really release really. animation as he's going to run one more time. Pavin cannot believe that he's getting run on by Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, he's just getting, there's no spy out there. And you heard Pavin say, I got to put a spy out there. He's just giving up that middle every time, only rushing three. And that's the thing, you know, you don't see this U trips a lot, like we said, so it's very difficult to kind of. Uh, defend it as you see Decroft going audible and down now to single back doubles for a little halfback dive but Pavin's all over fumble. a huge he's on, hit. He's on balance. Pavin begging for a fumble, begging for that big hit to pry the ball free. Chris Johnson though one of the more secure uh, running backs. Not a lot of fumbles in his career. Second and 13, Rogers dropping back to pass. Only three man rush from Pavin. Pressure's coming. Rogers gonna, gonna take off one more time. Decroft, he's doing a little bit of if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Keep on running, A-Rod. Great stick work by Decroft. Getting out of the or getting up the field. You know, when Pavin's only rushing three, the edges are collapsing, but he's getting up the middle. I like the route combo there. He had a high low read, but Pavin with great defense. Looks like he shaded down and then used with the up top route. 
Uh, big third and seven here for Decroft. Thrash drops back on third down, throws right side. That's Raheem Moster, a little possession catch. He'll pick oh up the God. first down. He did. How does have two down very down good running backs. 90 overall Chris Johnson and a 90 overall Raheem Mostert, along with Hollywood Brown, John Ross, and Tyree Kill. It's receiving <laughs> options all over the place for Decroft. Down five what? nothing. Stepping up, quick Bro, throw. Oh, he can't believe that he didn't That's get a big pop. It's going. That was a touchdown for me. Instead, it picks up seven for Decroft. Oh my goodness, terrible read by Decroft. Very unfortunate right there. Ed Reed was all over that, but just kind of missed it. And then diving catch with Chris Johnson was a very fluky play. Great defense right here by Pav and Wow. I think there was a spy out there to make sure that he didn't go anywhere. And that spy was Derek Brooks making the sack. As we'll hit the two minute warning, low scoring affair once again, but a little more offense in this one. It's 5 nothing. In this game, thousand dollars on the line, seating in the Madden Bowl. But our field is officially set. We cannot Number wait six. to get Come to on. it and spend Let's some go. time Come crowning the Madden wrong. champion. As that's Tyree Kill to the house, he ran a 4:29:40 at his combine. He showed off all the speed there. Bro, I should have a pick. Beautiful play by D. Right there, he now. motioned Come over on. that post. He had the high level read with the post and the, dr and the drag game. coming underneath it. Right, and he throws that nice post, able to get right. into the end zone with all that speed. Nice drive right there by Decroft. Come on. And just like that, it's turned into a high scoring baseball game. Seven to five. Now, with Decroft having the lead, Poppin's going to have about a buck 53 to get down the field. If there's somebody who can get down the field and score in that time, it is Poppin $144,000 in career earnings, and he's only 19 years old, folks, so he's gonna be around for a while. First down and 10. Into that gun bunch, Vic. Looking left side, short route, and who else but Torrey Holt, TD. Yeah, there's that Torrey Holt in the slot, that playmaker ability, one of the best route runners you can get. He does a lot of different routes with him in the slot. I love how both these guys putting spies on the field now. Both these guys love to roll out, they love to scramble. Great adjustment. Let's look for the uh, halfback wheel uh, combo here to the flat, and then we'll have a post over the top. Come on, edge threat, come on. Second and seven. Let's go, they come, come on, the edge to the slot. It's picked up. That's Ryan oh Shays here, God, and he's got come nothing on now. but room out there. Don't give up the on this guy. Oh, Ryan Shays here jumping that route and says, time. give me six. Huge pick six right there by Decroft. Ryan Shays here all over it. Popping with a bad read right there. Oh. Trying to go to that wheel to the wide side, but... Decroft all over it with that Shazier and that was you know Pop not that looking as good on offense as he did in that grand in that grand final. So yeah, these guys yeah. playing a little loose now, knowing that they're in the Madden Bowl. But Pop, he really got to tighten it up if he wants oh. to win this game. A great click on by Decroft. We'll take a look at our Snickers replay. Look at this. He goes. I know right where you're going. Give me that. He's trying to throw to Jalen Samuels, and unfortunately, he got the other player whose last name starts with an S. Yeah, that's what we call a user lurk in competitive Madden. Great job, great stick skills by Decroft. Able to come over to that wheel and get a pick six. First and ten. Make up Vic, oh my outside God. the pocket, looking downfield. Oh, Tom catch, did he get his feet in bounds? He oh, did, Josh Krebs, showing off a little acrobatics on the left side. That's why you get that Mike Vic. Looks like he's about to get sacked. He's able to get that ball off with all those abilities on the sidelines. Big first down. And now he's rolling out of the pocket on. once Don't again, and this time, Daniel Hunter says, listen, we may have gotten, let you get outside the pocket and complete that pass one time, but not on my watch. Looks like Pavin could have ran with Vic there. He, he had a couple yards if he stayed to the outside, but he tried to throw it, and uh, Decroft was right there for the sack. Second and 11, he's going to that corner. Come on, let's go. Ooh, good defense. And that was Denzel Ward one more time. Talking about Decroft's defense. He's got cornerbacks all over the place. Tracy Porter, Dante Jackson, Denzel Ward, Marshawn Lattimore, and Marlon Humphrey. That's cool. All top-tier oh. cornerbacks all over 93 yeah. overall. TD Decroft was prepared to run this dime defense with all those DBs out there. Yeah, I mean, I think he had a feeling he was going to face either Fancy or J Wall uh, in that finals of the Xbox. And it was a smart strategy. We, you know, he knows how good of his uh, of passers his crewmates are. And like we said, the meta did shift. It's more of a passing game now, so he's been prepared for these high, pa uh, high power passing attacks. All right, we might have to name Pavin special teams player of the year. He's now down two punts inside the five yard line, and last time he was able to pick up two points off it. 
Yeah, these guys' punting skills have been impressive uh, this whole tournament. You know, it's really an underrated aspect yeah. of the game. And now, you know, difficult situation here for Decroft. Like has no timeouts at his own three-yard line. You got a nine-point lead. You want to be very careful here. You don't want to make any mistakes. You're fine with going to the to the half up nine. So, yeah, I think he's going to come out, run a QB sneaks, and try to get out of here. And he'll pick up a couple. TD, how crazy yeah, it is. Think, it, think about this year. Let, let's go back to clubs and Voltrax. Back to the classic with series mode, the Dallas Cowboys and Rags. How crazy is it to think how much the meta has shifted in, you know, just about seven months' time? Yeah, it is crazy. I mean, a lot of run defenses came out. We saw that nickel 2-4-5 odd, which eventually got patched. Oh, and now we have that point. nickel 3-3-5 three, three, wide. We have some decent 3-4 defenses still. So, yeah, a lot, a lot of defense has been found for these right. run attacks. Um, two, four, the game has allowed point, more right. passing abilities to come out as well. So, Good yeah, half. the meta has really shifted. I, I'm interested to see what guy, a guy like Volterax does in the Madden Bowl with those run-heavy attacks. Now, just like that, we have hit halftime. Couple defensive plays, keys to the game, a safety from Decroft ended up hurt ended up not hurting him that much because right. he came back with a pick six of his own. Just like that, it is 14 to 5, a thousand dollars on the line. Both these players have already solidified wow, their bro. spot in the sure Madden Bowl, but which group combo. will they go into? That is the true question, TD, heading to the second half. Uh, Decroft having the ball up 14 to 5, and, and you talk about a guy who knows a little bit about winning $1,000. Those weekly Friday night football tournaments, he is fifth most all time in wins with 48. So he knows what it's like to play high pressure money games of Madden. Definitely. You know very oh well Decroft is a legend in those Friday Night Footballs, along with guys like Clef and Wesley. So Decroft has played a lot of high-level competitive Madden these last few months over the whole year. I mean, Decroft, obviously we know the Seahawks club champion, one of the best players in the community. And Nick, you know, we talked about Group A and D because uh, the winner and loser will go into those, but we didn't talk about Group B and C at all. I mean, <laughs> Group B, Kiv, Mo, Drini, Mills. Group C, Noah, Clef, Low Man, Scheming. This whole Madden ball is just stacked. Yeah, I mean, when you get down to the Madden Bowl, at the end of the day, you're getting 16 great players as that throw Ball across the middle job. is hey, caught by Ross. He takes a big oh, hit. I mean, like we asked we asked Pavin, you know, what was it like oh, grinding the LCQ? Considering last year how well he did first year on the uh, on the, the tour at 18 years old, able to win the club championships, qualify for the Madden Bowl, we asked him, what was, what was the LCQ like? Uh, and he said it's been a lot of fun. He goes, he goes. the online elimination games are high pressure. They're fun. They're exciting. Uh, he said he had his toughest game was against Radiant because he just didn't play well. Um, and, but at the end of the day, he was able to overcome that and do something that nobody has done, win three games and defeat the winner's bracket champion and get his spot in the Madden Bowl solidified. As get out, CJ. Get out, that CJ. Single back doubles and give it to CJ. 2K to pick up 11. Yeah, I love the diversity that Decroft is showing. You know, he's audible and down to these dives out of single back. Pavin, you know, in those in, in a lot of uh, a lot of defensive backs on the field. So Decroft with a smart strategy, audible and down, trying to use some of this clock has a nine point advantage, two possessions. So he's in a prime position to get this victory, get that extra thousand dollars. Yeah, you you look at those those groups in the Madden Bowl. As you mentioned, I mean, we we talk about A and D, but. You know, Group B, Young Kiv, Sirius, Mo, Drini, all in the same group. Mills, who we haven't seen since back at the Classic, uh, really on the circuit. It'd be interesting to see what Mills comes up with for the bowl. Group C, Noah, Clef, we, they, we saw their battle yeah, at the see, challenge. Yeah, Come on. Lil Man has been so consistent. Chris Johnson on, showing off the now. wheels. Chris Johnson to the Finish house. He's saying, let's stop win. talking about the Madden Bowl field because we got a game right here, and Decroft has blown this bad boy open. Man, I think Chris Johnson has been the MCS uh, player of the year as far as who, who people are using in Madden. I mean, I feel like every time I watch a game, Chris Johnson is running for a touchdown. But just nice run right there by Decroft. Good stick work. Just hit him with a little, not to do too much, just a little wiggle. And uh, he takes a big advantage now, opening this game open, or opening this game up 21 to 5. Five points for Pavin. And, you know, Pavin's got to get going quickly. He's got to get the ball down the field. Here's a fun fact for you, uh, TD, and in my research for these games, Hollywood Brown, Tyree Kill, two of the We're fastest players on the field. Chris Johnson's 40 time was significantly better than both of them. He ran a 4-2-4-40 in his combine, 
And Tyreek Hill ran a 4-2-9. Hollywood Brown ran a 4-3-2. I mean, that shows you the wheels that Chris Johnson had in no the frame play. of a running back. Keep everything in front. Yeah, that's just unreal. <laughs> I mean, that's insane. 4-2-4. Four, four. Oh, my God. Like, the one thing you unreal. cannot do. Nice corner out right there to Josh Cripps. Pavin staying alive, but he's got to get in the end zone quickly. Uh, you know, I love uh, – Pavin's really rolling out basically every play with these corner routes. He does a great concept where he runs that wide receiver post, so he has a deep post coming from the backside, rolls out to the corner route. Sometimes the zones will come down the corner route, and you can hit him with the bomb over the top. And uh, goes to – oh, there's that Torrey Holt again. Just, that's been dominant for him all day. Torrey Holt's nickname in the NFL was Big Game. He's had a couple big games here with Pavin. Really been the main part of his passing attack. Back into the gun bunch as we near the two-minute mark in the third quarter. Nick Mazesco, Tyler Davis along with you. Hey, what a weekend it has been oh as the pressure, that edge threat gets there one more time. Well, Neil Hunter's third sack. TD, I, this, the best part about this that we've got this all set up, we were able to put on this production. I mean, it makes you just even more amped for the Madden Bowl coming up. Oh, yeah, May 6th we start. I can't wait to get going corner on that. Corner out, corner these, out, corner out. These are the 16 best players for a reason. They, they either got the most uh, points, they won belts. Like, they deserve to be in that position for a reason. And I can't wait to see, because basically the Madden Bowl crowns who the best player was. At the end of the year, you know, all the tournaments we've had, it puts those best players there for a reason. So I can't wait to see who's crowned best Madden player in the world. So amazing. Five hours of Madden content today on ESPN2. And guess what? May 16th, we'll have the finals of the Madden Bowl on ESPN2 once again. Sliding down at the 28-yard line. TD, the guys were talking about it. Uh, Mo and User saying how amazing it is to see the growth of the Madden game. The fact that we got five hours of content on ESPN2. And you look at I'm what we have this. upcoming. I oh, mean, I'm you really see around. this sport growing uh, throughout not just the Madden community, but the gaming community and the sports community in general. Man, it's amazing. You, you, I mean, people don't understand. I've been, I've been in the game a long time. You know, I was traveling to, like Mo and User, we all been traveling for like $2,000 tournaments back in the day, you know, flying to Ohio and like Midwest, you know, for these small prize pools. And now we're here on ESPN playing for $220,000. It's just unreal. And, you know, I'm just so proud. I'm so happy. I'm just trying to grow this sport as much as I can. You know, I'm so excited for all these guys. It's just a great opportunity right now that we're in. Hey, let's go. Come on. Looking to the end zone, picked off one more time. We're going the other way. D. Crop's defense. He puts the the D and D. Crop oh, must stand for defense, TD, at this point because he shows he's way more than just an offensive man. player. Hate the entire. Yeah, board. defense has been great for D. Crop all day. You know, Bavin is playing a little suspect here. I have to wonder a couple things. You know, we'll, we'll have to ask user in the post game, but I mean, it, this isn't like popping on offense. Usually he's very, way more solid, way more consistent, and now Decroft looks like he's just going to run this clock as much as possible. Get out of here, uh, getting ready for the Madden Bowl, and he's got all the momentum. I mean, Decroft has not lost at all this weekend. He's got a lot of momentum heading into that Madden Bowl. It's excited to see what he can do. Decroft saying, I'll take the thousand dollars. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't matter to me. 21 to 5. Put your fours up in the chat. We're to the fourth quarter. It's a 21 to 5 score. I'm not that bad. Let me know what I'm good. TD, he's loose. I mean, look at D Crowd. Hey. He, he's just, he's loose. I mean, he looks ready to go. Put your fours up in the chat, because we're on Twitch again. Put your fours up. It's time for the fourth quarter. That's presented by Creamy Snickers. You're not smooth when you're hungry. Oh, no, no, no pressure. This party's garbage. That bad, huh? It is that bad. It's like a bag of zero. Try this Creamy Snickers. You can use a little smoothness. Is that one of the zeros? Get smooth with the fresh ground nut butters and Creamy Snickers. Let me know why I'm good. Let me know when I'm good. TD, if there's one thing we can say, from the guys who've been playing this weekend, to the crew, to good? the production team, to the casters, we have we have the farthest thing from a bag of zeros here in the MCS, because it's been an unbelievable weekend. Man, it's been amazing. Shout out to everyone behind the scenes. Guys like Nick, Alex, Fosto, Lauren, all helping us set this stuff up. I mean, it's been a phenomenal production. I think the community is loving it. I think they're proud. I'm very proud of what we've accomplished. It's been awesome. I've had a blast. And bless all of them 
for having to walk uh, walk user through his setup uh, because uh, I, I heard I heard Fausto had to change his nickname uh, to to Fiasco because of how much a fiasco it was trying to get user to set up his backdrop. <laughs> Yeah, man, it's tough. I had some issues, too. Those guys have been so patient with us. They've been awesome. And Decroft now looks like he's just going to run this clock. And, Nick, to you were saying earlier about Decroft, he really is on a roll. And the thing I noticed about him, you, you, you were said it, you nailed it. He, he seems confident now. Like, he just seems like he's in a groove. He's ready. And, and you love to see that. Uh, has all this momentum going into the bowl. Third down and eight from his own six-yard line. Picked off Pavin a couple times. Hasn't lost yet here in the LCQ, and he'll comfortably run the clock down a little more. You know, TD, I think I saw a lot from D. Croft. I think, you know, you, you talk about moments that maybe the light bulb turns on that sort of makes the game click. Beating Kiv in that Seahawks club final, it seemed to give him a boost to confidence that has really propelled him the second half of the year and really propelled that entire TNC crew to go, listen, we're here and we're a real force to be reckoned with. Definitely, and especially at the end of this year. I mean, TNC has really came up on the scene as one of the top crews. They've really looked great. I mean, all four guys made that LCQ Xbox bracket. And if you can beat a guy like Young Kiv, of course, you're going to have a lot of confidence. So that's one of the best players in the world. Uh, Seahawks club champion in Decroft. So, yeah, I definitely agree. And he's building all that momentum. But, yeah, I mean, yeah, there's we see a punt here with Pavin. Oh, he's got a chance to return this, though, Nick. Let's see what he can do with Ed Reed. Go out of bounds no, at the 42 yard line, and and you know one of the other things I'm interested to see because these guys were talking about, you know what's Voltrax going to look like? Guys who we saw at the clubs, uh, guys like Scheman. You know we we sort of forget that the cap has gone up significantly since that club championship. We're at the 1325 cap now, and you know Pavin was saying the fact that that got raised it meant he could build a more perfectly balanced offense and defense rather than having these tanked positions on both sides. And you look at their roster, TD. It's it's absolutely true. You're able to have just a lot better players across the field. Oh, 1,000%. I agree with that. I mean, beginning of the year when the cap was much lower, I tried to make a balanced team, and you really couldn't play that way with the, how the cap was the, then. Now the cap is raised. You can really have studs on offense, oh defense. God. I mean, we're seeing this Mike Vick, who costs oh God, a, basically a million cap out here. And he, he, you know, you can, and then he still has a great defense to go with it. So it really, you know, creates a dynamic where you can be balanced on both sides of the ball. You can have superstars and abilities and high overalls all over the field. And that kind of creates a more balanced game for, for both players, in my opinion. And that Michael Vick, 10% of the cap as Vick will take off, and he'll walk into the end zone. Popman goes, hold on, hold on. Don't sign the check. Don't spend that $1,000 just yet, D. Croft, because I'm still in this game. It's cut it back to a 10-point score. Yeah, he's got to get this two-point conversion, though. He's down 10 points right now. Uh, if he can get this two-point conversion, it'll be an eight-point game, one possession. So this is a crucial play in the game right here. Who wants it? Does Popman want to stay in this game, or is D. Croft going to hold the door? Decroft only allowing 8.6 points against. And that had to have gone down yesterday with his performance. Looking back at the end zone, it looks like it's caught. It's going to be an offside. It's going to be declined. So it should be an eight-point game. And all of a sudden, hold the phone, folks. we got a one-possession game, all three timeouts for Pavin. And, you know, this, this is the example, TD, of don't take your foot off the pedal too early. God, yeah, here we fumble. go. This is what we love to see. Final game of the day, eight-point game. Who wants that thousand dollars? Who wants to get all the momentum going into the Madden Bowl? Can D. Croft finish the job here? I know he's going to try to run some clock. He needs. He probably. He needs probably. He needs two first downs, maybe three, to close this game and ice it. We'll see if Pavin can come up with a defensive stand. First down and 10. It's Chris Johnson with the dive, looking right side. He'll get to the 32-yard line. Man, I didn't even realize he has three timeouts, and he gets this two-minute warning. So he has a real opportunity to put together a defensive stop. Can Decroft just pick up a first down? A first down will come about as close to ending it as you can at this point. $1,000 seeding in the Madden Bowl. Oh, the winner goes to Group D. Loser goes to Group Stop, A, but go. both will see the Madden Bowl looking over the top. How about the little fade <laughs> route to Hollywood Brown, the former oh Oklahoma God. Sooner, making plays on the sidelines.
Yeah, that'll probably do it right there. Decroft has a little glitchy, unbumpable fade. I played him a couple months ago. He ran that on me. You can't run man-to-man -man versus it. You can't run cover two. And just Why a great job right there. Swerved on the sidelines to get his feet in bounds. And right now, it's very difficult for Pavin. Decroft can go up two possessions. Oh All he's going to do, he'll probably run the ball three times here or two more times and kick his field goal, go up two possessions, and ice this what? game. Here's the other thing that, you know, I was wondering, you know, looking at Decroft and Pavin and some of these other guys in the tournament, you know, a guy like Pavin, he talks about who yeah, laughs with Henry oh and Wesley. God, They're here. both in the Madden Bowl. They're going to be focused on getting their game plans together. The TNC crew were all in the LCQ, so Decroft is going to have his entire crew labbing with him for the next week to try to find a new wrinkle. Does that give him a little bit of an advantage? Yeah, I think it does. Yeah, like you snap, said, Poppins, snap, you know, his snap, buddies are going to be in the tournament. They're going to be pre Let's preparing go, themselves. Oh, big run right there with Moster, mm -hmm. and that'll seal it. Uh, oh great job God. by Decroft all Way weekend long. Oh Did not Let's lose go. once. On. Just phenomenal on both sides of the ball. I wonder if Decroft's going to spend that $1,000 on maybe some more Seahawks gear. He's going to walk away with this one with 1000 bucks in his pocket. And that's going to seal the group. So, you know, TD, look at that group. Henry, Rage, Wesley, and Decroft. Boy, oh boy, talk about offense. Yeah, I mean, so now we're going to see. So, Bobbin made the decision to get into that. Well, he did lose, so it doesn't. He's getting into that group A now with Joke, Boogs, and Vault, who are very difficult. And then Group D oh. now. Henry, Wesley, Rage, and Decroft. I don't even know who the favorite is in these. They're just so stacked. You know, you probably got to think D is Henry just because he's probably a top three player this year. He's made a run in every tournament. And then in A, you'd probably say the same for Joke just because of his consistency. But, I mean, look, Bugs, Volt, and Pavin are, are three top, probably top 10, top 15 players themselves. So it's very difficult to predict who can win these groups. Yeah, group A, Joke. Most Stay MCS here, points this year, Bugs most made a team for the MCS teams, final right? appearances, Volt That's the defending crazy. club champion. I mean, how could you pick the, the favorite in any of these groups? That's our final from our seeding game. And TD, 